All right, guys, welcome to Arduino tutorial number one. Uh, this is going to give you a brief synopsis as to what the Arduino actually is, and then we'll go through the board and look at all the hardware that's available. So the cool thing about Arduino is that it is open source, meaning that the developers have uh, put it out to the world, and now everybody's using their boards and making phenomenal projects. Uh, there's extensive hardware that's available for the Arduino. So anything that you want to hook up to the Arduino, it exists. Just look at the net and you'll find it. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. Here in, uh, in Canada, you can buy an Arduino for $25 to $30 Canadian. It's cross-platform, meaning that you can use this on a Windows machine, a Mac. You can use this on a Linux system. Um, it's totally open to all the different software. And aside from that, it's simple, clear programming. So for somebody like me who doesn't have a good background in programming, it's a good place to start. You can learn the Arduino, and then you can, you, you can move on to harder programming. It's also a good place to, to learn the basics before moving on to PLCs. It's a cheap and easy platform to learn inputs, outputs, um, different types of sensors. And then you can go out and purchase a more expensive PLC, and you'll have a good background as to the, the programming and how each of the sensors actually work. Now there's Arduinos and there are clones. So because it's open source, like they put everything out there. They show exactly how the board is made. So other manufacturers have created boards that are essentially the same as the Arduino, but they're not identical. And when you purchase one of those clones, it doesn't go towards the Arduino program. The Arduino program is an open source program um, and every purchase that's made to the Arduino uh, program goes back into redevelopment and new technologies. So I would say, don't go and buy a, a clone board and go and buy an actual Arduino board. That way, all of the funds go towards making new technology and go towards the original creators. All right, so let's dive into this board here, guys. Uh, this screen image that I've grabbed here is from Adafruit, not sure how to pronounce it, Adafruit, Adafruit, um, amazing site. Um, they are like the, one of the main places to go to get information for Arduino and to purchase, if you're in the States, to purchase all of your stuff for the Arduino, the boards, any of the components, any of the sensors. Um, they're awesome. They have everything available and then they've done tutorials as well. So everything that I'm showing you, they are, they've already done. I'm just putting my own kind of spin on it here. So, But let's go through this uh, this board here. And if you want, go to this link below here, and you'll be able to see their site. A uh, little bit harder to purchase right from Adafruit in, uh, in Canada. So at the end, I'll show you distributors that I use in my local area. All right, guys. So let's start off here. We need to be able to power up this board. So... One of the ways you can power this guy up is with the USB connector, uh, giving you five volts and the ability to power up everything on the board. This also allows you to be able to transfer your program from your computer onto the Arduino board. Okay, so that's mainly where, what I'm going to be using for the next little while. Um, you can also use uh, an external power supply and the ratings for this guy is seven to 12 volts DC. So once you've got your program embedded onto the board, uh, then you can disconnect from your computer and then use an external power supply. If that guy is not available, you can also use uh, another input, which I'll show you in a couple seconds. Now, everything on this board revolves around this controller chip, the AT Mega 328. This is the brains behind the operations, uh, and all of your headers, all of your input and output headers, are going to tie into this chip. Okay, on the top here, similar to, similar to a PLC, you have your inputs and your outputs. What's cool about the Arduino here is that these terminals, um, and I've said terminals 2 through 13, but you can see that it's actually 0 through 13. We're just not going to make use of these two terminals. I'll talk about that in a couple seconds. So, but pins, ter pins 2 through 13 uh, are your digital I.O. That's your digital input and output for the Arduino. And that's really cool because you can determine whether those terminals are going to act as an input or whether they're going to act as an output simply through the program that we're using in the IDE. Okay, so those guys have a, a voltage rating of 5 volts. Uh, anything where it doesn't have the squiggly lines, so terminals 2, 4, 8, 
12, and 13. Those are digital inputs and digital outputs, meaning that they have either values of 0 volts or 5 volts. As an input, you're putting 0 volts or 5 volts. As an output, you're outputting 0 volts or you're outputting 5 volts. Uh, the 5 volts will be referred to as a high, and the 0 volts is going to be re referred to as a low. Okay, the max that you can have coming out of those terminals are uh, 40 milliamps. Above that, smoking a pancake. So you can use the, those terminals to control other external relays and stuff and use the relay to control higher loads. You'll also notice that um, pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 have squiggly lines. Those squiggly lines denote this that they have the ability to provide pulse width modulation in that you can get a value of 0 to 5 volts out of each of those different terminals. So if you want to just turn an LED on and turn an LED off, then you can use pin 13. If you want to slowly increase the light output from that LED and then slowly decrease that, then you're going to have to make use of pulse width modulation. And those terminals would be these guys, anything with the squiggly line right here. Okay, we'll get into each of the different projects and you'll see the difference between the digital output and the pulse width modulation output. Okay, in addition to that, we have analog IOs on the bottom there. Uh, so down here, we have six different terminals. You'll notice that all of these terminals start with zero. So similar to a PLC, the numbers will start with zero and zero down here. So you have six different terminals that you can use as analog inputs. Uh, they are going to take a 0 to 5 volt DC signal in. Okay, They'll use what's called an analog to digital converter. So they will take the analog 0 to 5 volts and they will change that into a digital um, binary number that, that corresponds to each of the different voltage values that you're putting in there. So as the 0 to 5 volts input increases, then your analog to digital converter will change that to a binary value that matches with each of those different voltages. Okay, uh, the reason why we're going to stay away from terminal 0 and terminal 1 are that those are also being used for serial com communications. So you can use those guys for your digital I.O., uh, but if you put too much on there that it could interfere with your, um, with your transmission and receiving of your program. So we're going to try and stay away from 0 and 1. We'll make use of the, the other terminals We'll be hard pressed to make use of all of these terminals on any single project. Okay, in addition to that, uh, the ground reference or the zero volt reference is right here. So, this ground reference and the ground reference that I'm going to talk about in a couple seconds, they're both at the same potential. They're both at the lowest value on the board or what we're going to call zero volts. So, we will have a signal coming from some of these terminals right here to our LED. And then to close that loop, we're also going to have a, um, a jumper going to the ground here. Okay, there's also an analog reference point right there, and we'll talk about that in later videos. On the bottom here, there is a reset pin. Uh, in addition to that reset pin, so if you put a, a low voltage here to the reset, then it'll reset your program at the start. In addition to this pin right here that you can have with an, an external reset, like a signal coming in to reset your program. You can also press this button right here. And by pressing that little push button that's embedded on the board, you'll reset your program. It'll start fresh from the beginning. Right here beside the reset pin, there is a 3.3 volt and a 5 volt power output terminal. So you can power things up externally with those two voltages. And then to close that loop or to close that circuit, we'll make use of this ground terminal. And again, this guy right here and this guy right here are at the same potential. Beside the ground, do we have another voltage in pin? Uh, the reading for that guy is 7 to 12 volts, matching with the external power supply. So if we have another um, source or a battery or something that we can use, um, then we can power up the board with this guy right here. Okay, most of the time I'm going to make, be making use of the USB connector, but it's really cool in that you have all these different options. You have USB connector to power it up, an external power supply from like a wall, wall ward or something. Uh, and then over here, if you want to have a DC battery powering this guy up, you can power it up onto that terminal right there. 
Okay. Uh, on there, there are a number of different LEDs embedded. So I just brought up this guy right here, the LED pin number 13. Uh, in addition to that guy, we have an on LED saying that the board is powered up. And we have that transmit and receive LEDs here. So we can use these guys for troubleshooting. If the power supply kicks out on us, then you'll notice that this LED goes off. So we'll use that as troubleshooting. And then if we're trying to talk to the board, but these guys aren't chirping at us, then we know that there's something wrong with our serial communications. Okay, but this guy right here, this LED right there, is tied into pin number 13. So we can have an external LED tied into pin number 13 along with a, a resistor to it, so we don't smoke that LED. But we don't actually need that one hooked up. There is an LED right here in parallel with pin number 13. So anytime that we reference pin number 13 and turn on that output, this LED will also turn on at the same rate. All right, so we'll make use of that for our first project. All right, guys, that kind of covers everything that we need to know uh, for the start on this board. If you're looking for uh, ways to purchase this guy, let me bring up the browser and I'll show you exactly where you can purchase them in Canada. So these are the places where I've purchased components or boards so far in Canada. Um, I'm, st I'm basically using Elmwood Electronics now. Really like uh, their site and they've got awesome uh, customer service. Uh, aside from that, you also have Canada Robotics and Abra Electronics as well. If you know of other places where you can purchase the uh, Arduino components in Canada, then just leave them in the comment section below. Let me bring up the browser and I'll show you each of those guys. So first one is Elmwood Electronics. Again, you can find all of your different Arduino components here. Uh, other places in Canada to purchase these guys uh, are Ca Canada Robotics. And they all have comparable prices and everybody seems to have really good uh, customer service. Uh, Abra Electronics is another place, I believe out of uh, Quebec, that provides all of your electronic components. And I forgot to give a shout out to uh, the robot shop as well. So uh, Elmwood Electronics, Canada Robotics, Abra Electronics, robot shop, you can purchase any of your things from each of these different stores. In addition to that, there's also Amazon. Um, you may be able to find things a little bit cheaper on Amazon, um, but again, you're not getting the, the customer service that you might have with each of these guys. And all of these guys, if you're in Canada, you're supporting local stores. All right, guys, so we'll stop there. What we'll do on the next video is we'll go to the Arduino site here. Uh, we'll download the IDE and we'll start in on our first program. Thanks very much for your patience, guys. We'll see you guys on the next video.